Alright, making a video. I'm going to response video soon. Uh, look, he's a generic representation of the typical lazy, fat-ass, selfish human on Earth. Alright, the glib, blah, 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 blah. You know, don't don't worry, be miserable, idiot. Uh, you know, that makes up the human race. So it's worth having the conversation just so we can see how they rationalize their thin, you know, blubbery perspective on reality. It's all kind of fuzzy and hazy. <laughs> you know, um, so, <clears throat> you know, and they all complain because, oh, you made a long video and I can't deal with long videos and subject isn't really important anyway. I can, I'm just talking out of my ass on everything and about everything and I really don't want to be accountable for what I say. I mean, I was just saying Nazis looked pretty cool and organized and, yeah, Jews are kind of poopy. What do, you, what do you need to do all this explaining stuff for? I mean, that's the kind of attitude. Like, he can glibly say, this is the truth. Okay, and he says it in this sloppy, I read it in a book once attitude. And he expects that somebody's going to be able to make the counter-argument by saying what? No. Oh, that's all I have to do is just say no? <laughs> you know, come on. Uh, so, you know, it's just such a whiny little silly complaint. But anyway, let us uh, play along because this is the game we're stuck with. Uh, we're living in the shitrix instead of the matrix. And so this is what we have to do with our programs. Hey, I, uh, nah, I, nah, it's, nah. it's, that. 3 10 in the morning. Wow, okay. It is Mardi Gras. Yeah, well, nice, but, uh, yeah, snowy here, and there's going to be more snow, and so we're all going to die. But the good news is, maybe in the spring you'll get flooded. <laughs> yeah. um, and I live in New Orleans, so, as such, apologies if these response videos are not going to be... <laughs> as prompt as they would normally be. Yeah, I couldn't give a shit about the prompt, but the whole glibly, lazy, blah, blah, blah crap is just really irritating. Yeah. <clears throat> but I want to say a couple things. Blah, blah. Right? Because you've, you've published a magnum opus. It really isn't. It's just a counter-argument to the words you've put in uh, anti-natalist mouths while you complain. And then it's a... <laughs> well... Yeah, I got you. You can't say value is arbitrary and then say you recognize it as being meaningful. It just doesn't mean any sense. In response to me. Blah, blah, blah. Um, something like four hours of content. Hmm. Whatever. This is, this is, I, I, well, I'm sorry, yeah, but at least I was talking in the videos, making points, all right? I wasn't just fucking lighting cigarettes and blah, 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 wasting your fucking time. You know, two videos at a, at a combat. So, how do we do this? Oh, how do we even begin? Shit. First of all, I mean, the key moment in those, in those videos are, it's, is, when I said I'm not a consequentialist. Yeah, well, I think the key moment is when you said all value is arbitrary. <laughs> but whatever. Um, consequentialist. I'm not a consequentialist either. If you, if you mean, um, uh, we don't, all accidents, even when people have an accident, we uh, accuse them of murder and convict them of murder. Yeah, I would say that would be idiotic. We often have perfectly reasonable, um, we do personal, per, per, perfectly reasonable things based on perfectly rational uh, understanding of, of probabilities, and the exact opposite happens. The Titanic sinks. Do I blame the engineers? Did they do a stupid job? No. They just didn't anticipate everything, and so they got fucked by a perfect storm, so to speak, quote unquote. Um, so yeah, I'm not a consequentialist in the sense that I wouldn't persecute somebody. I don't give a fuck about this judgment shit anyway, other than 
to secure the prime directive. And the prime directive is to prevent unnecessary suffering. There, that's the prime directive. Let's prevent unnecessary suffering. Cool. So all I have to do is define unnecessary, and suffering is really pretty easy. Yeah, and apply all judgment to the prime directive. And you replied so well by saying, consequentialist, what does that mean? You don't believe in consequences? You don't believe in cause and effect? Yeah, well, that's what it means, actually. So, yeah, that's a consequentialist believes that everything is only judged based on the outcome and that somehow the, the, the judgment is somehow meaningful. I'm just saying, of course, if I make a mistake, I'm a mistake maker. It's just a fact. The people, the, who, the engineers who did the Titanic, I bet when they heard the Titanic sank, they didn't just go around saying to everybody, hey, aren't we great? I bet they said, ooh, we fucked up. We are fuck-ups. I'm sure a lot of them were saying, we were, we are fuck-ups. Maybe even some committed suicide because they were so fucking um, disappointed in their performance. So, yeah, they judged the reality that they failed. Failure is a rational description of an event. It's not a judgment in the sense that you're just sitting there for the sake of it, just pointing figures going blah, blah, blah. But the fact is, you either succeed or you fail. Those are facts. They're not some sort of judgment like um, uh, a bigotry or an excess judgment. They're a perfectly rational judgment. You either succeed or you fail. Doesn't your intent is nice, but it's irrelevant because in the end, failure or success is going to be what happens. I mean, you know, all the good intentions in the world just aren't good enough, all right? If your plan isn't good enough and you fail, then you fail. That's the definition of your activity, failure. Nice try, but you failed. Now, this immediately should strike everyone who watches this video as a problem. Yeah, anyone who watches this video who has an agenda, oh yeah, who has your agenda, it's a problem, right? The agenda of the minutiaists, the let's evade realityists. So that's how I will qualify your concern that I am. I don't have proper reverence. Instead of saying Jesus, praise Jesus, I'm saying praise Jeebus. And therefore, I should be kicked out of the club. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm, I'll be glad to be kicked out of your fucking fanatical, anal, insane, ass wipe, let me read another book of bullshit club. Very deeply a problem. Again, this is... <clears throat> part four of your response. Blah, 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 blah. The reason why it's a huge fucking problem is that... Yeah, part four of my response where... I think that was the part where you said value... No, that's where you complained that somebody was calling you a value relativist and a value nihilist when you said the words all value is arbitrary. Sequentialism is the number one school of ethics going around. Going around where? Nairobi? Where exactly is it going around? I see the number one school of ethics going around being Christianity and Mohammed are some variation on the, you know, whatever, theme of a god. Hmm. I, most of the, yeah, I think both of those religions don't give a fuck about good deeds or good acts. All they care about is praise Muhammad and praise Jesus. And if you don't do that, okay, you're a criminal. You go to hell. So, yeah. Right. You're the truth teller here. Uh-huh. That's an accurate description of the human race, is to say the human race is consequentialist. Hmm? No. School of ethics that I don't subscribe to. 
Well, that doesn't mean much, right? So none of you people can actually uh, articulate what you subscribe to. You, you subscribe to a whole school <laughs> of theory regarding a subject that seems to me to be pretty obvious. Hmm. Let's see, how many, I mean, is it really, is, is it really that hard to tell the good from the bad and the ugly? Yeah, the good, the bad, remember? Good, the bad, and the ugly. Often the good, the bad, and the ugly are the same thing anyway, though. <laughs> yeah, it's newsflash. I'll let you in on a little secret. So, what this means immediately is, 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 it's like saying... <sighs> Warning. Uh, it's like, so we're back at the it, it's like, so I'm sure we're going to have a religious reference, right? This is going to be a religious reference, right? I want to argue about evolution. Who's Darwin? Well, that's pretty close to the same thing, right? So when I was, what, six, seven years old, um, I had been raised, you know, praying and Jesus, Jesus, going to church. Um, didn't understand any of it, frankly. You know, I... I couldn't find any personal relationship to be had with the great and powerful one. And then, they, round six, seven, I squirreled it out of them. I, I nagged them enough for them to give me, well, there is this alternative theory. And they explained it in about, whatever, six sentences, you know, that, uh, well, that all the little animals are, dis you know, descended of each other over a long period of time, and, and that they change and become variable over time and that we're basically related to the monkeys and such and I said oh that makes a lot of sense yeah that makes really good sense there, uh, no Darwin mentioned no no need to read his volumes it's this very simple theory okay Darwin didn't invent evolution the idea of evolution was around a long time before Darwin all Darwin did was put enough evidence in a book so you could go up to a Christian and mash him in the head with it and say, ha ha, we've pretty much got proof now, so fuck you. And that's what Darwin did. So what, we need the fuck you part? That's, that makes evolution is the fuck you part? And since Darwin, we've only compiled 99% of the, of the evidence of evolution, all the genetic evidence. Okay, I mean, come on. The real deal has been scored after Darwin. Um, the, the subtleties of the process of evolution and the fossilization of the evidence, we understand all of that stuff now, so we understand why the missing links are missing. So is it really just about Darwin? Hmm? No, it isn't. What speciation? I'm going to take a very strong stance in evolutionary biology, but I don't know what these things are. Well, newsflash, you, you want to talk about arbitrary? <laughs> yeah, the standards of speciation are rather arbitrary in the sense that it just has to do with defining when something has become different enough that it's not likely to mate or re replicate with its former kind. Um, I mean, the, the standards are, are rather arbitrary. So, the moment you admit... I mean, arbitrary in the sense that we can obviously have significant genetics and similarities um, with organisms for which we are less reproductive with and then organisms that we could possibly reproduce with that's what I mean by the arbitrary part. It's not based on necessarily genetic similarity. It just has to do with functional features, different tools. That you don't know what the word consequentialism means. Oh, no, whatever. You know, I know what a consequence is. I know what the theory of the consequentialist is. Is It's more like, I don't know what you... you it's almost okay. You could almost argue in, in drunk driving, all right, they persecute the fuck out of somebody who actually kills somebody drunk. 
All right, he goes to jail for 20 years. And the asshole who doesn't happen to kill somebody but just injures them or something, he'll go to, you know, drug treatment or something. So, yeah, that's sort of a, an idiotic standard. For the exact same behavior, we have a very different penalty, right? You can attempt to murder somebody, and because you fail, you shoot them and they don't die, you get a different penalty. You get a different, you, you get rewarded for failing to accomplish your mission. So, yeah, those are, that's consequential ethics, and it's really stupid in that circumstance really stupid. In fact, there's multiple words in my video that you don't understand. That yeah, well, that's your accusation, so fuck you. All right, that, that's your big counter-argument. All value is arbitrary. Um, calling suffering a bad thing is as silly as calling it a potato. That's your words, asshole. At anyone who's ever cracked a book on the subject of ethics. Well, I don't know where. Show me a book I crack where some asshole compares suffering to a potato. Show me one book in the history of all the retarded motherfuckers on earth. Even Noah wasn't that dumb. Show me some fucking place on earth where they compare fucking suffering to a potato. Show it to me, fuckhead. Period. The most facile pedestrian reading of the subject of ethics. Well, you should know facile. But go ahead. Would be able to recognize and say, all right, I understand that language. I might not agree, but I understand that. I don't understand any asshole who says, <laughs> you know, uh, value? What's that? <laughs> yeah, what's a value? That's arbitrary. That's a potato. A potato is value. Yeah. Fuck you. Language. This is trivial, right? This is this is this is initiate novice kind of stuff. Just yeah, that's right. A six fucking year old can say, "Yeah, suffering be bad." Yeah, a six fucking year old. This isn't, there's nothing that I've said that really gets deeply into the issue of ethics. Yeah, so, you didn't, that's right. You're just a superficial jackass who just throws words around uh, with no willingness to take any responsibility for what you're saying. You're saying value is arbitrary. Well, quite, you think it's arbitrary to connect suffering and pleasure to the fundamental core values for which we are exchanging. In, in our existence, that this is the exchange rate, that every fucking activity of a human being, pretty much, has to do with somebody wanting something to give them comfort and taking it from somebody who's going to have to, en who is going to, have to endure the discomfort. Isn't that the nature of every, almost every fucking transaction on this goddamn planet? Is, are people doing something different when they have friendships with people who they really aren't really friends with? They don't really like them, but they're just using them? Isn't this what almost every fucking thing happening on this planet is revolves around, you stupid fuck? And you're going to sit there and pompously and arrogantly sit in your lazy fat ass with your lazy attitude and tell me that somebody else has got it wrong? No, you have got it wrong, fuckwit. The language that I've used, that is, you know, someone accused me of, of being esoteric. Yeah, I'd accuse you of being a lazy thinker, and probably everything else you do is lazy and sloppy. But I'm not, really. I, I am using the language that any ethical philosopher would use. Uh, yeah, whatever. So what we got? We'll, 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 whose, whose interpretation of the language do we use? And uh, again, is it always the same? Is all consequentialism as stupid as the laws we have uh, uh, regarding drunk driving and murder? So, I mean, where, where do you want to draw these lines? I mean, sometimes you have to take responsibility for consequences. But again, I don't give a fuck about consequences beyond just labeling them either 
good results or bad results. So the extent of my judgment would be to label them good or bad results and what action will prevent bad results and what action will encourage good results. There. That's the extent. Is, is that philosophically too weighty for you? We should, re we should reward good results and we should punish bad results. Wow, that's just outrageous. So again, and, and I mean by we should punish, let's say, things that um, tend to lead to good results and things that tend to lead to bad results. So obviously we should, the tendency is when you shoot somebody in the head that you're going to kill them. So we probably should discourage the shooting in the head, not necessarily the killing <laughs> versus just injured. Like that's so much better. It's so much better to be half killed by an assassin than it is to be killed by one. You know. Yeah, go talk to James Brady guy. From the very fact that you don't know what the word consequentialism means in this context. I can deduce, I think quite confidently. And please, my subscribers, tell me if I'm wrong to draw this conclusion. Oh, yes, you're a subscriber. So please, all the little fuckwits up my ass, because you're all selfish bastards looking for rationalizations to, 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 to make yourself immune to accountability, and that's all you're doing. You're all evading accountability for your own fucking disgustingly inequitable um, and um, failed behavior. So you're looking for some way to justify being preposterous ethical failures um, through rationalization. And so you've spent three minutes and 49 seconds. Have you said anything that means anything except trying to insult my intelligence? Oh, I guess not. Have you? But I can deduce quite confidently that you have no, that you have never cracked a book on the subject. You have no background on the subject. You have no concept on what ethics is. Or how uh, yeah, right. I haven't read your book, apparently, right? The book of what? Uh, the Holy Kant? The Holy Nietzsche? Which, which book? And then you're going to make the claim. Why don't, you, why don't you back it up? Because, you know, if I prove otherwise, well, I don't know exactly how I prove I read something. Um, I think I've actually read some of, some Nietzsche. I actually read in a video, but you know, whatever. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, I don't know. And and you know, to tell you the truth, if if you're gonna if you're gonna live by that sword, you're gonna probably die by it, because you might as well just say you're a religious nut. So you can't really call. I don't think you can be a Kantian and <laughs> not be a religious kook. Tell you the truth. But whatever, it doesn't matter how ethics functions, or how to establish ethical claims, or how... Oh, yeah, no, this is how you do it. You and a bunch of other Nazis get together. You say your duty is to your race, um, you know, and to your better kind, you know, the master, um, the ubermans, and uh, let's, let's fucking kick the shit out of these fucking dirty, scummy little... Um, you, you know, what would they what they call them, those people that migrate from place to place and such vagabonds. <laughs> no, you know what they well anyway. You know, and, and they turned out to be, you know, you know what they you know what they, they went after. And so you say it's your duty. And now you just all do your duty and you all feel good about it. Oh, you're all doing the right thing. You're cleaning the human species for us. You're all wonderful human beings. And anybody who comes up with some sort of equation that you're just disgustingly horrible parasitic monsters. Oh, no, they, we don't have to worry about that because we did our duty. Yeah, fuck you. Ethical claims have been established in the past. You are totally alienated and disconnected from the discourse that we're talking about. Yeah, your agenda. That's right. Yeah, I don't have any... I have no um, appreciation for your agenda whatsoever. I have no interest in your agenda. Um, I think, as I've described you, I think you're just looking for rationalizations to excuse your fucking selfish, um, um, egomaniacal perspective. Yeah, I think you're way too full of yourself and you're, um, a blight, uh, on the human reputation. Again, much like a creationist is disconnected from from evolution. No, well, you're the creationist asshole. You're the one with the dogma of duty. 
just do your duty and everything's just fine. We'll subjectively agree on a common bigotry and then we'll enforce it. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. It's like watching Ray Comfort talk about evolution. The way you talk. Yeah, well, you're like watching Jerry Falwell, okay? A fat pig. You, so you look just like him, almost just like him. <laughs> what, you want me to insult you some more? Fine. Talk about ethics. Or the way you talk about how I talk about ethics. More like him. Yeah, potato. Yeah, suffering is a potato. Um, now that might be, I'm, I'm waiting for the ivory tower, you know, comments. Yeah, I don't but, think, I don't think you could, uh, you could get in the gates, to tell you the truth, at least without a tie. <laughs> Take a bath, maybe, too. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Fuck, seriously. Ethics, it's not like it's a, it's a, something reserved for a privileged few. You can read Aristotle's ethics. Why the fuck do you people keep, why don't I read Jeebus, okay? He's almost, uh, he's not, he's not nearly as old. <laughs> right? So, yeah, Jesus is newer than Aristotle, so why don't I go with Jesus? He's the new guy. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Yeah, I'm going to go find the truth by asking some guy who didn't know what thunder, lightning, electricity, microbes, viruses, uh, geology, round earth. Uh, yeah, sure. That makes sense. And understand some of the language. You can read the critique of practical reason and understand some of the, the the what's going on there. You can like all of that material's available. It's not like there's a hidden cabal cabal of ethicists somewhere. Well I already stated in my video quite clearly, okay, the books I'm interested in are chemistry, um, biology and physics, which is all physics. But yeah, those are the only books I'm interested in. Okay, I don't need some asshole to, 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 uh, well, you know what, I wouldn't mind if they actually wrote a book that was direct and coherent. But all your philosophers, they don't write coherent books where they say something explicitly about the reality we live in. They just pretend to say, well, I can't figure it out, I can't see it, so no one else can see it. No one else, I can't see value, so no one else can see value. Well, I can see it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you are too stupid to figure out that you're a value engine in existing. I'm sorry you're too stupid to figure out the most significant thing happening on planet Earth is that sensitive organisms are experiencing sensations. I'm, I mean, I, it's pitiful that you can't figure that out. It's pitiful that all your authors can't say that simple statement. Show me in one of your philosophy books where they acknowledge that the significant thing happening on planet Earth is that sensitive creatures are feeling things. Show me that. No, there's a history of ethical thought. <clears throat> and I'm using language that's right at home in that history. Well, whatever. It's, I, I have to be versed in your Mohammed religion, is all you're saying to me. I believe in Mohammed. You must read Mohammed or you can't talk to me. And I won't treat you with any civility. Fine. Okay? Who sounds like the religious nut? Oh, I think you do, fuckface. And the fact that you're so divorced. Well, fucked face, I should say, right? It looks like it's been fucked. <clears throat> hard and badly. And so disconnected from that. I think immediately, like, it gets my, my goat to when you start to make st really strong ethical claims. And what is your strong ethical claim? Suffering is a potato and all value is arbitrary. And shout down other people who don't make those claims. So whatever, shout them down how? Oh, that's right, by playing their video and responding to their accusations. My God, what an obscene offense. Unlike you liars who put words in other people's mouths and make accusations that are fundamentally and completely untrue. Oh, yeah, right, I'm the bad guy. No, you are. That's a, that's a, a first 
at first blush, that's the thing that, like, that bothers me. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and yet you want to have a strong... Suffering is like a potato. No, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know, you don't have clue number one. Sentient sensation is important. There. Is that helpful? Opinion on the thing that you're talking about. Right? Again, just like a creationist. No, you're the one just like a creationist, okay? You're talking a theory, a dogmatic view of reality where some group of bigots get together and say, we don't like the darkies, let's fuck them over. And then they call themselves good people. Because they did their duty to their subjective cabal of bigots. We the bigots. <laughs> yeah. Might makes right. I mean, really, you can't be saying it any louder. Might makes right. The bigger our cabal, the bigger our group, the more legitimate it is. And the more powerful it should be. And we will do our duty and smite all the baddies. Because we're the goodies. Because we would agree with each other that we're good. Because we have a common, solid bigotry. There's another question. You're calling me a nihilist, a, a moral nihilist. But what you don't recognize, and what you, and you don't recognize, is because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. No, uh, I mean I should interge I should replay his clip right here, right? Okay, value, <laughs> value, uh, all value is arbitrary, and I can point out where every book that would be labeled moral nihilism, every philosopher who advocates for moral nihilism says exactly those words. What you don't recognize is that there is a difference in the use of the word value. Value has more than one. Catch 22. Oh yeah, that's part of Catch 22, right? Oh, damn it. Oh, I didn't mean value. I meant value. Oh, fuck. My bad. Catch 22. Did you ever read that book, fuckface? On meaning. Right. If I say, if I talk about the val, and I talked about this in a comment that I just posted on your video a couple hours ago. If I say- Oh, great, I can't wait. Hey, the value of a dollar is X. Right. That obviously means something very different than if I say, Autonomy is an ethical value, right? <clears throat> Autonomy is an ethical value, right? So now, now he's saying that autonomy, the 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 ability to act what independently of what. So you're 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 you believe in free will. It sounds like a religion to me. Where's the freedom come from? You're not, this autonomy, is it logic-based? Are you free to act independently of logic and reason? That's more valuable. So acting independent, regardless of whether it's logical or reasonable, is valuable. So when the crazy person doesn't act reasonably or logically, it's great because he's acting independently. Look, you can only do this autonomy thing on an island, jackass. I mean, newsflash, I don't want to explain this to you, but this is a really populated island, Earth. Okay, there's lots and lots of other people on it. And if you want to be autonomous, you have to kind of go someplace where you don't affect anybody else. Because that's the only fucking way that works as an ethic. Okay, the higher responsibility is always going to be to how you're impacting the other equals. You know, the things equal to you, the things with a welfare that can be destroyed by you. And there's just no fucking way to do that on planet Earth, jackass.
but of course you won't take that's not on your your value list okay their welfare isn't on your value list your value list says selfishness be good do more of it you're a randian these are two different concepts these are two different words even they're homonyms Right, they're worth. Well, wait a minute. The word value was not in your statement, so I'm just I don't really understand. Okay, I mean, uh, autonomy is an ethical value. An ethical value is different than something of value. That's true. Ethics is the consequences of a declaring a value. Ethics is the math. Value is the weight. Right, you get it? Values the numbers. Ethics are the equations, the formulas. That's the ethics. Can you get that analogy or is that over your little head? Am I too high a tower for you? That sound the same but mean something different. You are arguing for value in an economic sense you are arguing for a oh yes well an economic sense which is exactly what the economy is based on again as i've pointed out but you don't seem to understand that's exactly what we're trading in the economy why does the dollar have value it has value because it can compel a man to go into a coal mine and die why does it have values because it can buy drugs that'll save your kid from dying that's how it acquires its value, is that people have to do unpleasant things to earn it. Unpleasant things create the dollar. That's what creates its value, fuckhead, is pain and pleasure. That's what creates its value. The economy validates the, f the fact that we have an economy completely is consistent with my philosophical notion that the core value is in the welfare of the sentient being. So you lose again. No surprise. Cost-benefit analysis. And as such, I think it's incoherent. Yeah, well, I think it's incoherent, and that's all you say is, I think it's incoherent. I think you're pretty ugly, pretty fat, and pretty ignorant. Yeah, that was fun. And the reason why I think it's incoherent is because it's arbitrary. There we go. Incoherent because it's arbitrary. Connecting pleasure with good, like a dollar, okay, and suffering as bad, like an, a debt note. Hmm. Gee. So the <laughs> you know, that would be just insane to, to think about suffering as a debt and to think about pleasure as a profit would be insanely arbitrary. There would be no logical or rational connection between that idea at all. That debt would be like bad and like suffering. That's irrational. That's illogical. God damn, I mean, really, fuck shit. You know, I won't say god damn, I'll say fuck shit. That's the fucking point I'm getting at. <clears throat> and I think your point is absolute nonsense, and I'm arguing that. And your counter-argument is to spend 7 minutes and 16 seconds saying I'm too stupid to understand your potato argument. It's incoherent to associate suffering with a deficit and a negative, but it is coherent to associate it with a potato. Well, to associate... <laughs> no, well, okay, I won't put that word. I won't say you're saying it's as coherent. It is the same thing. It's just as stupid to associate... Um, suffering with a deficit as it is, or a debt, as it is to associate suffering to a potato. Those two associations are equally illogical, incoherent, and arbitrary. That's your theory. 
and I think your he theory is preposterous, so nonsensical, <clears throat> not even a six-year-old could understand it. Yeah, that might be a good way to say it. Not even a six-year-old, in all their honest, I'm listening potential, could make any sense at all of your theory. is that the way you are talking about value situates it in, uh, in the same context as, as talking about the value of the dollar, which is arbitrary. So again, he says the value of the dollar is arbitrary, that it has no relevance to the welfare of human beings, that value isn't, so directly, the value of the dollar isn't directly associated um, with um, the uh, uh, establishing the 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 work, the blood that's on it, the value. It buys labor. It buys um, um, suffering and comfort. And that's where it derives its value from. If it didn't produce comfort, and if it didn't provide a contract to get people to go into the ground to suffer it would still mean something in the economy. No, it wouldn't. The value of the dollar goes up, it goes down. It's intersubjectively agreed upon. Well, again, that's just absolute nonsense. It's not intersubjectively agreed upon. It's printed by the Fed. So obviously it can be destroyed at any moment by just printing more of it. But the idea <clears throat> of what we're bartering, the barter doesn't change. The fundamental value of the barter doesn't change. That doesn't change at all. Does it? I mean, are people really trying? Is, is, is porn still really popular? I mean, come on. Get real. Are women still being bought and sold in the world? Comfy cushions, silk sheets. I mean, has anything changed in thousands of years in terms of what we're trading for? What we're sacrificing to get something? I don't think so. Do you under, do you get this? The value of the dollar is something arbitrary. It's something perpetually changing. It's perpetually, it, it's something that's intersubjectively negotiated. And this is how you're talking. Well, that's just absolutely stupid. The, the fundamental concept of profit and loss, or debt, hasn't changed. Alright, so it's just silly to say the value of the do dollar is arbitrary. It's always better to have one than to owe one. Is that arbitrary? Is having one and owing one an arbitrary concept? Has that changed? The goodness of having a dollar versus the badness of owing a dollar? Has that changed any? Is that arbitrary? Is it just as good to owe money as it is to have money? Thinking about the concept of value, right? You're putting things on scales. You're talking about things in terms of instrumental reason. If you don't know what that fucking word means, then look it up, man. Instrumental reason. Let's see if you put it in the description. No, damn. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll do that someday. Maybe the next video. So values, or value, not plural, value in the sense of... Uh, uh, this economic cost-benefit analysis, the value of the dollar, are arbitrary. That's the point. You are relativizing value. No. The moment... I, again, this is just idiotic. We do know that debt is bad, profit is good. We do know, everybody know. come on, come on, just admit it. There's no time where you would say, I'd rather not have more money. Or, I'd rather have more debt. Never happens, ever.
ever, 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 ever. It's not arbitrary. It's not erroneous. It's not meaningless. It is the basic, absolute, factual truth that you would never, ever, 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 okay, want to be in debt and not want to be in excess. You put it into this economic framework. Uh, actually, economics, again, is a reflection of the core exchange, the core fact that we are exchanging our comfort usually at something else's harm. And that's the function of all the living things on Earth. That's what they're doing in their interactions. They're exploiting each other to, to maintain their existence. That's the game we're playing, and it's not a good game, Jack Ass. Values as such, values in a moral framework, values, excuse me, there's another problem of the moral and the ethical, which you don't seem to get the difference between. Because, like, quite... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, quite, quite. yeah, no, I, I'm just saying, the word moral is just um, a sloppy word to use, just because of its association with dogmatic religion. If you can't understand moral edicts, okay... So, yeah, it's a dangerous word to use. I don't think it has any value whatsoever. I don't think there's any necessity for an intelligent, reasonable person to ever go near the word moral because the word ethics takes care of all these equations. There are only two things. There's the core values, and then there's the formulas of, of um, doing the math. So you have the, uh, the fixing of the values, and then you have the formulas of the math. So you have the ethics is a description of the formulas. It's a description of the mathematics. And values is the, <laughs> quite obviously, as the word implies, is the uh, declaring or uh, deducing the, the um, weight of the numbers. What a 2 is, what a 4 is, what a 5 is, that kind of thing. Seriously, if you can give me any evidence... Any a shred of evidence, one piece of evidence for the idea that the word moral is more theological than the word ethical. I'd love to see it. Because as far as I'm aware, Kierkegaard uses the word ethical in talking about Christianity. Right? Every... I, I, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, we have to do this sourcing? I'll say that if I play you every evangelist on TV... They, they'll use the word moral 99.99% of the time, okay? And they'll use ethics 0.00001% of the time. So, yes, I will say that if you, you want to make that bet, I'll make that bet with you. Well, let's just make it 95% just to cover it, sa make it safe. So we'll have a safe bet that they use the word moral 95% of the time and ethics 5% of the time. And if you disagree with that, let's have a nice big giant bet, and then we'll have somebody do the calculation. We have an independent party do the calculation. How about that, fuckhead? Christian philosopher uses the word ethics, the word morality. On the right, so this is like uh, that lamb ham guy. Right? He found two biologists who believe in God, and therefore that proves it, right? God must exist because two biologists believe in God. Isn't that what you just did here? You really think that religious people talking of religious text and in defense of religion don't constantly use the word moral? The moral majority? They didn't call it the ethical majority, they called it the moral majority. But what I, I mean, really, this is the crap we're going to argue about. I'm saying I personally find the word repugnant and repulsive. I personally don't think anybody rational and logical would ever use the word because it doesn't mean anything but dogmatic edict in sense. It has nothing to do with core values. It has everything to do with some notional value. So I'm saying for a logical person, someone who is a determinist and believes in evolution, I see no fucking point in talking about the morality. The other hand, and this cons really comes up with the Enlightenment. It it uh, comes up with the metaphysics of morals by by Kant. That's the first place I'm aware of the, the use of the word. 
And the yeah, well, Kant is a religious fuck, so again, I don't really see how you're winning the argument here. Point was to establish a morality that was not God given, even though he was a Christian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even though. <laughs> oh, fuck. More moral is the more secular term in the history of thought. All right, do you believe that?